Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Uh, we're here again to discuss. Um, today is a health topic, uh, Zoom, and it's a super hot one because I think this is the most um, number one question that I get is what to take for diabetes. diabetes. Um, and not to mention, it's just the number one question that I always get, but I mean, the population that has diabetes is insane. It has tripled over the past 20 years. Um, this has surpassed um, global projection. Very sad. So we're on a very sad, sad, sad track. Um, and this is a lifestyle disease. Uh, we want you guys to really understand that. And that's what we're going to drill in today. Um, <laughs> Drilling in. Drill in. Um, the, the reason I guess I feel like so strongly about it is because I know that it can be prevented. Um, and it doesn't take that much work, but you do have to put the work in, but it can be prevented. Uh, whether your family has diet, everybody in your family has diabetes or not, this can be prevented. It does not have to be for you. It's sometimes reversed. And so it's sometimes reversed, exactly. So um, a lot to talk about. So I'm going to let Ryan sort of dig in and open it up with diabetes and we'll take from there. Yeah, you know, so I'm going to try to keep it lighthearted in a way and jovial because it's such a doomy and gloomy topic. Um, like Lisa said, it's sad, but there is a silver lining and that is that a lot of this can be prevented and much of it can be reversed in what we're going to talk about today. So to get started, though, let's do, let's do a quick, like, identify, I want to identify a continuum of care, the way that it kind of flows. And this is just more of a sort of Western medicine approach to it. It's starting to spread global. But so if you go in to primary care and you have your blood work done, you come back in for your checkup and you're reviewing your labs and you see your blood sugar, your fasting blood sugar is a 95, whatever, high 90s. Not much is said if at all, come back and it's 115. I'm not even sure much is said then either. Although that range at 115, you are now pre-diabetic. At the 95, you were pretty on the, you're on the high end of normal. And then in the 115 range, you're certainly a pre-diabetic. And much many providers really won't dig in at that time, surprisingly. So then you come back, Nothing, nothing can really be done. They're not going to prescribe anything or do anything or really consult on it. Then you're going to come back and it's going to be 126 milligrams per deciliter, which according to our, you know, medical, medical guidelines, uh, you are now clinically type, type two diabetic. Uh, again, I'm really kind of drilling in on a type two diabetes. Today, we're going to discuss insulin resistance and type two diabetes. There's also a continuum there. You know, you could be insulin resistant and insulin resistant and not diabetic, but of course, um, type two, type two diabetics do have some insulin resistance, of course. So, I mean, but that example though, that, that example of now you're at 126 milligrams per deciliter. Now you can receive medical care. So now you'll get a prescription. Now you'll get a follow-up appointment. And uh, so, and, and, and there's your kind of cycle, right? And that's where most people get stuck, that they get stuck. They do get told that there's opportunity to make changes in lifestyle, but they don't typically receive any real intensive instruction. Right. Or an intervention or an intervention, prevention. Right. right. Um, say at the 95 mark. Hey, look, Susie, um, you're trending. creeping up there. So let's do a little bit of lifestyle modification so we don't get higher and reach that pre-diabetes uh, diabetes to diabetic yeah, rate. Yeah, sure. So, all right. So from insulin resistance all the way to type 2 diabetes, we're not going to talk about like, um, you know, drugs, medications, pharmacotherapy. We're not going to talk about insulin. We're not going to talk about checking blood sugars or really any of those numbers for the most part. Today's going to be more so about the costs, the implications, the things that we can do to reverse it, the positive approach to it, the lifestyle approach to it, and of course, the way that supplements can tie in along with other pillars of healthcare. So yeah, yeah we'll kind of go from that perspective. So here's the deal. At least half of the United States population is either pre-diabetic type one or type two. That does not mean that does not cover the insulin resistant crowd. There is potentially insulin resistance in people that are young, skinny, but sedentary. And so there's a distinction as well. So insulin resistance is really so what does that mean actually? That's probably what we should start with. Is let's try to try to define that. It basically means that the body continues to release more insulin because it's not the body is not uptaking blood sugar properly. Or there's just, the body just doesn't recognize the insulin as well, the sensitivity to it, so that the blood sugar, it, blood sugar can be two ways. It can go elevated or it can kind of be normal, but there's going to be an increased amount of insulin. The body is overcompensating. 
it's not metabolically correct in its process. And so a lot of it has to do with metabolic dysfunction. That's another key word I guess we should try to define too. So when you look at somebody and you talk about metabolic dysfunction, what does that mean? Well, there's clinically metabolic syndrome, which is five criteria. And if, if you have three out of that five criteria, that is technically metabolic syndrome. And that's usually that's high blood pressure, it's high triglycerides, it's high uh, blood pressure, it's obesity, and I think it's low HDL. I said blood pressure, obesity, um, HDL, and then uh, triglycerides, I think. But anyway, there's five criteria. If you get three out of those five, you're metabolic, you have metabolic syndrome. But the word metabolism is really two things. It's catabolism and anabolism. So it's the body constantly making and breaking down. So anabolism is building things up. It's usually an energy demand. Whereas catabolism is things breaking down and usually gives off, you know, energy. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's an important distinction because when we start talking about metabolic dysfunction, the next word that enters into the conversation is usually inflammation. And then you start talking about chronic disease. Like Lisa, I get hit all the time. So many emails come in on like, how do I improve my sleep? How do I improve my stress? I have a lot of inflammation. I have knee pain. I have arthritis. I have um, brain fog. I have... X, Y, and Z, other disease states. And I'm saying to myself, I don't know enough about this person, but I'm going to guess, I will bet that probably some level of the inflammation going on is due to insulin resistance. Right. I, and, I, and I feel like I get the same common question too, or sometimes I get a question about, I've just been diagnosed with kidney disease. And I'm thinking, well, what caused the kidney disease? Are we talking like, are we diabetic? Yeah. So you, yeah. you really need to focus on like, what is the real issue here? And there are significant issues. There are significant issues. On the far end of the continuum is full-blown type 2 diabetes. And that is obviously it needs to be treated under with medications and uh, intensive care because very quickly type 2 diabetes escalates into some severe, severe negative like um, outcomes, right? So of course we know that insulin resistance and inflammation lead to the three big killers, right? You're going to talk about um, heart disease, you're going to talk about cancers and uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and dementia, right? So again, when I get these questions, almost almost always, I wish in my, I, I would say, I'm like, if I knew this person, if they were under my care, I would address, I would address their insulin resistance or their prediabetes or their type two diabetes. Because we do know that type two, di type, type two diabetes increases the incidence of those chronic diseases significantly, significantly. And there's so many other quality of life measures that start to deteriorate like and rapidly. So the number one cause of amputation is type two diabetes or diabetes. Number one cause of kidney disease, diabetes. Number one cause of retinal disease, so like vision loss, diabetes. It's because the body is not able the sugar, the high levels of sugar are just so inflammatory, the cells that are not able to take up the sugar properly and conduct the metabolism. And so there's so much inflammation. I mean, that's those little blood vessels we just described, right? So, I mean, the outcomes are poor, but again, again, the silver lining in this whole thing is the fact that we can change, we can make lifestyle changes and we can alter the course of this really, really debilitating and, and costly disease. You know, I mean, there's so many aspects of, of our society that you can point to and have issue with, but diabetes is one we have to address. The curve is still climbing on an exponential curve. We are spending uh, unsustainably on it. People are unhealthy. They're losing their mobility. They're loss of productivity. I mean, there's so many things that are that are that are that need to be addressed, and they can be addressed. But most of it's lifestyle. Right. Okay. So speaking about lifestyle, yeah. there's a lot of things that that encompass that one word. So oh. let's start with our supplements, cool. which is part of lifestyle modification. Yep. With lifestyle. Sure. Let's do it. All right. So. The way I kind of approach it, like, you'll never see us have a diabetes support supplement only because it's I, I, that buys more into the, the reactive sick care model. It's not so much of a preventive or root cause identification model. It's not educational in any way. I'm not trying to help you lower your blood sugar, so to speak. I'm trying to help you understand the course of your chronic disease and how to kind of correct it root cause. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a lot of the stuff here is, has to do with nutrients, minerals. Uh, antioxidants, so the phytonutrients that are in plants and fruits and vegetables, um, as well as muscle synthesis, muscle protein synthesis, because as we see often in people that are overweight or obese, which that is roughly three quarters of our population, overweight or obese, and virtually everybody that is overweight or obese has insulin resistance, which, yeah, yeah that's a big one. That's a, like, virtually everyone. And um, real quick, before I forget, 
How do we test for insulin resistance? There's obviously blood sugar, fasting sugars, but that's probably not as reliable as an oral glucose tolerance test. So if you guys, you guys are out there and you're very concerned, if you're overweight, you're obese, or even if not, if you're at your provider and you want to know, you want to identify oral glucose tolerance tests is the way to go. Is that similar to like what I did when I was pregnant? That's the glucose load. Yeah, okay. they give you a glucose you get to test. Drink a nice, um, disgusting sweet drink. Yeah, exactly. And then they mount, they mount it to you over two, every 30 minutes, I think, over two hours for your right. insulin and your glucose levels, and then they can see how that how those two match up. But our approach to this was saying that, look, we know fat cells, okay, how about this? We know that muscle cells are the are the biggest user of blood sugar, right? So it's better than fat, you know? So, and with that said, lean muscle mass is probably the best, most effective way to start to correct blood sugar imbalances and insulin resistance. Right. So, so making, making sense out of that, it's more, the, the more muscle um, that you have on your body, the better, it's able to use the sugars in your blood. For the most part. I mean, simplify. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, that way it's clearing from our blood. It doesn't have that um, chance to get into this high blood sugar level. Yeah. I guess that's a way to look at it. Sure. And we have like, so, and then, so like vitamins, nutrients, they're involved in enzymatic reactions and chemical reactions in the body. And we just talked about how, Met what what say metabolic dysfunction is and again that word metabolism comes into play well that those are all biochemical reactions when you think of like magnesium to my mind it immediately goes there's like 300 biochemical reactions in the body that utilize magnesium we know vitamin d plays a lot of role in the multivitamin you have the b complex as well as other nutrients and minerals and so factor four you have an anti-inflammatory support system right with the ingredients in there and then you add in the muscle protein synthesis stuff. You have the amino acids, the protein. And then I said phytonutrients. So the reds and the greens, packed, loaded, full with phytonutrients and antioxidants. And antioxidants, I don't know how many antioxidants there are, but there's a lot. There's a lot. So the more broad range of antioxidants you can get, the better. And that was the concept with using some of these like superfood, high nutrient density, right? Not as common foods, not things that you would, you, know, you won't find broccoli or cauliflower in here. Um, but th that's the concept, right? Is to help. Because again, in that inflammatory process, the body's generating a lot of free radicals. And so you want the antioxidant as a com to combat all of that free radical um, you know, damage that can be done. Right. Yeah. And basically what we have here, we've just pulled out our ultimate wellness pack. Um, okay. And, yeah. and because again, ultimate wellness, like that's the goal here. It's, it's metabolic homeostasis. Like mm -hmm. you've got to be consuming all this stuff. So your body um, is getting what it needs and it can, can thrive, it can work for you. De being deficient in just one, just one vitamin or mineral can cause a whole slew of issues yeah. within your body. So you, you've got to think about that. It's not hand picking. Well, which one do I need for my diabetes? Okay, this is all whole health. This is you're changing your lifestyle here, right? We are preventing this, or we are trying to reverse this. You need this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to supplements, right? Uh, there are other things. Uh, we can even just since we're just talking about nutrition. We can just go straight into the, the diet side of it. Okay, sure. It, it's about, it's what you eat, how much you eat, and when you eat. Okay. These all play a, a big role in um, managing, um, I was going to say managing diabetes, not that, <laughs> preventing um, illness, but managing that homeostasis that we want, managing a stable, a balanced blood sugar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, eating a proper diet, it helps you lower your blood glucose, your blood pressure, your... Um, increases your blood flow. It helps you maintain a healthy weight. It helps you put on muscle mass, um, helps you sleep better. I mean, there's so many things that a, 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 a good nutrition can do for you. Um, I was actually just reading this study that was talking about um, our timing of eating. And I know a lot of times we talk about, you know, um, time restricted eating, right? Intermittent uh, fasting. A lot of people, there are all different kinds out there, but the most common one is the 16 8, right? Where you're fasting 16 hours and eating for eight. And it's very common for us that we will, I, I mean, for the majority, that we fast throughout the day kind of till we hit our 16 hours. So maybe it's like noon or one o'clock, two o'clock. And then we have our, our eating window. But this study was showing that, um, that we actually do better. Our, our glucose tolerance is greater in the morning. So think about if you just flip flop that 16, eight, say we woke up and within an hour um, that we ate our breakfast. And then we ate for eight hours and then we did our 16 hour fast. So I'm just, after reading this, I just kind of thought like how 
that can really benefit blood sugar. So um, if you are one of those that does do intermittent fasting, um, try to see, and you do it in the later half of the day, see if you can flip off it. And if you don't do intermittent fasting, try to incorporate it into your um, lifestyle. Um, that will definitely help. Another tip with diet is we know about food combinations, right? Don't eat fruit by itself. Don't eat carbohydrates by itself because that causes a spike in blood sugar. And you want to work on a balance. I always talk about like peaks and valleys versus, you know, rolling hills. We want rolling hills. So say you have your um, berries with some yogurt. You have the fat and the protein. That's going to help balance and stabilize that blood sugar. Same thing goes, um, um, which is, uh, what's another example? Uh, toast. If you want a piece of toast, um, you know, put some avocado on there, right? You have your avocado toast. That's going to help balance your blood sugar. So little uh, tips there. You, you some, you'll eat sometimes differently in a state of health or a state of disease, right? Like if you have a full-blown type 2 diabetes, you're really trying to make corrective action. You probably, even though some fruits, you know, and we're talking about natural sugars now, some fruits are lower than others. There's still a time where you, like, in, in, if you're really trying to kick and get out of diabetes, you really need to definitely avoid added sugars. Right. A hundred percent. Like no sugar added. No fried foods. Um, it's a big one. No, I mean, sugary beverages is the first thing that comes to mind for me, even the sports drinks. I mean, if you're, if you're an intense athlete, okay, maybe a sports drink, but if you're sitting at, on a couch or behind a TV and no berry, like no sports drinks, right. you know, no fruit juices. Um, even if you're choosing f fresh fruit, pick something that's low in sugar, like berries. berries, blueberries or strawberries, but maybe not figs or bananas. I mean, there's just, so you've got to start to educate yourself on the sugar load. That I would say is the biggest take home from this, for me anyway, for this call with regards to food, avoid all added sugar. Right. A yeah. Absolutely. And add the aminos in. If you're, if you're used to a sugary drink or some weird coffee thing, like latte or whatever, after mid afternoon, go for something different. Grab the reds or the greens, or I don't care what it is. Just don't, nothing, no added sugars. Right. You're going to have to adjust your palate a little bit, sure especially if you're used to very, very sweet things. Yeah. Um, but that just takes time. And I promise you, it will over time. Things will start to taste sweeter even when they're not that sweet. I do want to remind people, guys, this is not just for diabetics. So if, again, if you're in that, that category or sedentary, but you're lean, you still potentially have insulin resistance. And, and that needs to be taken seriously. So dietary changes must occur and it should start with eliminating added sugars. Right. And that should roll right into exercise because you were just talking about, you know, the, the being sedentary. Yeah. You can go as far down the literature rabbit hole as you want. Every time without question, it ends with the same thing. If you want to reverse type two diabetes, it's exercise, whether it's the anaerobic, you know, type or zone two, Whatever it is, but you can find more information online. We can't, we don't have time to get into that today, but it is exercise. It is weightlifting. It is putting on lean muscle mass. I mean, it, it, it absolutely is. That is a fact. That is a, that right. is a proven it, fact. Exercise is the key component to lifestyle right. therapy, the key component. Um, so like you, you could do, think you're doing everything right, but if you're sedentary, guys, the, the sickness and disease is still going to haunt you creep up um it's inevitable so it's you uptake of glucose it's the way that your body uses sugar and the one organ that's, that probably you should drill in the most on is the liver and the liver plays a huge role in the management of sugar right and even specifically for diabetics um this is like the the recommendation is 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous aerobic exercise so that's like you're you're biking you're walking you're, right. you're jogging um anything that's getting your heart rate up and kind of sustaining it up spread over at least three days per week to minimize consecutive days without the activity. Yeah. Okay. So divide that 150 up through the week. Um, if you if three sessions or, or more, um, and then also you need to do, um, you need to do a resistance training sure. and, and it recommends for diabetics two to three resistance training sessions uh, a week on non-consecutive days. You've got to, it, the goal is to get your body doing something every day. Say one day you do 30 minutes on the bike. The next day you do some resistance training. You don't have to have a gym membership. Go no. into your garage, go outside in a, in a room, it, use your body weight, but you, that's, that's resistance. You have got to be doing this stuff and you can easily buy bands and whatnot on Amazon, which is super cheap guys. I mean, this does not have to be a lot, I promise you. But goal is you have got to move your body yeah. at, uh, on most days of the week. Um, so exercise, nutrition, mm -hmm. Sleep is another one. Sleep's right up there for those. Three. Okay, so sleep is sleep is an under recognized factor in type two diabetes. 
um, what it does to uh, your blood sugar and insulin resistance with uh, lack of sleep. And typically this is uh, not getting enough sleep. I, I just, I think that's is what the, the study that I was reading was yeah. most based on because that's also what's going on um, in our population. We're, we're not getting enough sleep. We're not giving, allowing ourselves enough time. We're too busy, we're too stressed, there's too much light. Yeah. You know, so um, cortisol production shoots up. Right. Well, that's a, yeah, that's another one. So uh, sleep and stress kind of, mm -hmm. in a way, go hand in hand. But blood sugars, um, blood sugar levels rise um, in response to stress hormones being released. Okay. So if you think about it, like it's a vicious cycle. We're stressed out, so we're not sleeping. Then we're not sleeping enough, so we're stressed out, and our our insulin resistance is through the roof. And these are all just pieces to a puzzle. When we talk about all these lifestyle things from from supplementation to diet to exercise to sleep to stress, these are all pieces to a puzzle that you've got to put the bus puzzle. You've got to do it all. So if, if it's over, if this is overwhelming right now, and you're like, well, I don't know where to begin. Begin with one thing. Say, look, I'm part of Live Good. I'm going to go and I'm going to get myself that ultimate wellness pack, and I'm going to get on the supplement regimen. Then once you get that solid down, then work on the exercise. Okay, incorporate that, and little by little, put your puzzle together. And that's the goal, right? To yeah. have this one big piece and we're working on prevention and hopefully reversal yeah. of diabetes. Number one, avoid added sugars. Then go to the supplements. There we go. Okay. I have to say <laughs> Truth that. Truth be told. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've got to avoid sure. those added sugars. I mean, added sugars too can just come from like sitting on the couch and snacking on crackers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, oh, those crackers add up. That's all carbohydrate sugars. So it's not mm -hmm. just like um, reading the sugars. Uh, those, yes, I understand added, but do read your labels. Yeah. Because they sneak sugar into a lot of things that you never, ever, ever, ever even know. Yeah, Google, Google like some um, different words for sugars because they'll hide them under words that you would never think that it was sugars. Um, you, you've got to make sure you're preventing that. Look at the grams of sugar, yes, but also, you know, read the ingredients. Cool. Um, Try some buttons. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know I do have one, Ryan, for yeah. you that I got the other day. So someone was saying that their whole family has diabetes. So they're on their way to um, being diabetic themselves. What do you, I mean, we, we always know that your genes are not your destiny. Sure, yeah. Sure. And that's the topic of epigenetics. And you, you talk know. about that quite a bit, epigenetics, right? Yeah. Um, actually, I'll just cut right to it. If both parents have diabetes, the biggest predictor for the children to get diabetes is insulin resistance. So again, if you have a strong family history of diabetes, measure and try to find out if you have insulin resistance. That is key. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> oh, nice. 13 miles on a stationary bike. You go, Pam. <laughs> Fair enough. Love but it. But that's such a great thing. So like, okay, look, you have a 20 to 30 minute Zoom you're about to watch. Right. Get on a bike. Walk. Put it, put it in your, you know, um, head buds in your ear and go for a walk outside. Cleaning the house is exercise. Yes, move your body. But also remember, we need, um, I'm very big on this. I love activities of daily living. Okay, that's, we're, we're cleaning, we're doing this, we're moving. Uh, maybe we're, we're working outside for a little bit. Activities of daily living. Those are important, um, but we also need to have structured exercise. You've got to make a point to think, I am doing my 30 minutes of cardio today. Tomorrow, I'm doing my 30 minutes of resistance training. It has to be, has to be structured. Um, to really be effective. I don't know if that was one you wanted to, I know it's hard because we're not talking about a pick one. I'm avoiding pharmacotherapy questions. Okay. I don't want to go there. I have five holistic centers and these are the greatest products oh, ever. Man. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Jenny. All right, so. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. So I would say too, there's a group that we started on Facebook, right, Lisa? Can you comment on that? Because it's just really about oh, yes. encouraging and promoting active lifestyle yes so the goal with this guys is we just want to get more people out there um, using our products in a healthy way active way so it's living good with ryan and lisa and it's really just to to motivate others motivate yourself share how you're you're using our products to better your your life um whether it's i mean honestly whether it's the new sleep patch to to help you get that solid sleep that you need so then you can exercise tomorrow because you haven't been able to exercise because you're not sleeping and you're tired. Whatever it is, we're all working on improving ourselves. Um, and it's it's nice to share it with others so we can not only get ideas from others, but just the energy and the motivation is a, is a huge part of it. Um, so it's really not designed for like questions and whatnot. 
Um, it's really just to share. Hey, just post a picture of you exercising and moving. Right, yeah. mixing your aminos and then going out for, oh, sure. for a walk. Um, you know, it's just share how you are, are bettering your lifestyle. Uh, with liquid. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. We'd love to see it. All right, we're at 20, 25 minutes. Okay, after. that's pretty good because this one I feel like we could get going and going and going. Um, but guys, yeah, so puzzle pieces, start somewhere and then put that puzzle together so we can work on um, preventing diabetes. Eliminate added sugars. Start there. <laughs> Please. All right, guys. Um, any further questions, go ahead and shoot me an email. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful week. Yeah. Bye now. Hey guys, welcome to Scrum Master Full Call.